today I've got this. She's not a VFA 10 for a change, nor she hasn't got any interesting transistors, but she's quite interesting in other ways. Nakamichi is a Japanese company not exactly known for its amplifiers, but rather its state-of-the-art cassette decks. I'm sure everyone knows the famous Dragon or the 1000 player. The company was founded by Etsuro Nakamichi in 1948 in Tokyo as Nakamichi Research Corporation, which was later joined by his brother Nero. Back then, Nakamichi was focused on research and development of electronics and optics, but later shifted his focus solely on audio products. Nakamichi is known for lots of innovations in audio fields such as NAAC technology, which stands for Nakamichi Automatic Azimuth Correction, used in the Dragon cassette deck which automatically aligns its heads for optimal performance. Similar technology was used in their Dragon record player, called Absolute Center Search, which centers a record to make sure the needle is not wiggling about the groove. Also, Nakamichi was first to use three separate heads in the cassette deck for playback, recording and erasing. Nakamichi's first power amplifiers were part of a rack system called System 1, released in 1977. They were quite popular back in the day and supposedly they were quite good. Ten years later, the PA50 and twice as powerful PA70 were released. The amplifiers were not developed by Nakamichi in the first place, but by Nelson Pass back then from Threshold and licensed to Nakamichi. The PA7A was basically Threshold S300 with Japanese components and a little bit different chassis. Nakamichi made some slight changes to the circuit, but I have no idea how much different these two amps are. The PA50 and the PA7A were Japanese versions. In Europe they were called PA5E and PA7E and in the US they were called PA5 and PA7. The PA7A costs 380,000 yen in Japan and I'm not sure if it can be properly converted to nowadays USD but if I can trust these inflation converters it should be something like 3300 US dollars today. In the US it costs 1600 US dollars, which should be about 4300 today, and in Europe, specifically in Germany, it costs 5000 German marks, which should be about 5700 US dollars in today's currency. Nowadays, they can still cost quite a lot. Then there was an updated model, which is the one in this review. Mine's of course Japanese version and is called PA70CE. CE stands for Custom Edition. Then there's again European version called PA7E2, the version for the US is called PA7A2 and there's yet another version, this time let's call it a world version, called PA7 2 What's quite interesting, the world and American versions don't have these bigger speaker terminals, while the Japanese and European versions do. Also, Japanese version has got this nice custom edition inscription on the front panel and of course they've got different transformers to make them work properly in different regions. The PA7SCE was released in 1988 and cost 420,000 yen in Japan, which is about 10% more than the PA7A. I don't know how much it cost in the US, but in Germany she cost about the same as the previous model. The PA7A CE differs from my older sister in a couple of ways. Original PA7A is rated at 200 watts per channel in 3 tones. The custom edition is a little bit more powerful with a 225 watts. The primary cause of this power rise are 2 more transistors per channel. Instead of 32, the CE sports 36 FET transistors. Another difference is these for 33,000 microfarad caps made specifically for the custom edition, as well as this toroidal transformer. There was also a problem with some capacitors being too low in the PA70 and those were replaced with much higher value in the custom edition. The PA70 CE is a bit more power hungry, 60 watts more to be exact. At normal listening levels in relatively normal room, she doesn't draw much. 7 watts you see is drawn by a step down transformer I use for my Japanese stuff. When I turn on the amp, the power consumption jumps to 380 watts or so and then it slowly goes down and stabilizes somewhere around 180. Now let's add a DAC to the equation. When I pushed the amp hard to a barely bearable listening level, it jumped to about 250 give or take after I subtracted the DAC and the step down transformer. 
There's also a slight weight difference. The PA7A weighs about 27 kilos, which is about 59 and a half pounds, and the custom edition weighs 28 and a half kilos, which is about 63 pounds. The PA70 was accompanied by CA70 preamplifier. There wasn't an updated preamp model for the custom edition though. To make sure the final quality was top notch, every single unit was manually checked and listened to on BW801 speakers. The PA70CE was Nakamichi's last stereo power amplifier, even though it's not technically a Nakamichi amplifier. After that, some years passed and unfortunately Nakamichi missed the boat and couldn't keep up with the growing market and they were slowly going bankrupt. To make the matters even worse, in 1998 Nakamichi was acquired by some shit Chinese company and the same year Nero Nakamichi left the company and founded Mechanical Research Corporation to develop ultra-high amplifiers conveniently called Nero. Even though the PA70 is very similar to the Threshold S300, you can certainly see Nakamichi's handwriting in the design. She's a very nicely designed piece of hardware, but the entire chassis is basically one big heatsink for the transistors. I'd even call her beautiful. As with almost all Nakamichi devices, there's only a black version. There were no color variations like silver or gold. From the outside, the build quality is simply brilliant. She's robust, everything fits, nothing feels knackered or out of place. The front handles can help a lot while handling the amp and you don't have to worry about the handles breaking off or something. The heat sinks are big heaps of aluminium slapped directly on the transistors. They do a pretty good job of dissipating heat. They can get quite hot, but it's nothing compared to the Yamaha B1. You can burn your hand touching the B1 in the summer. See for yourselves, all of them turns on right next to each other for about an hour. If you need to position the amp vertically for whatever reason, she's got quite handy feet on the back panel. They can be useful in certain setups. The bigger speaker terminals are one of the best I've ever used. You can fit banana plug or rather white wire in, however, forks won't fit there. Just tightening the terminal feels sort of satisfying and you can be sure the wire is screwed in properly. The smaller terminals on the flip side are typical crappy terminals you can find on low-end amplifiers, which you can't fit a wider wire into. I fancy how clean the amplifier is on the inside. Very neatly done and arranged and there are no unnecessary wires lying around. And finally the sound. What's special about these amps is their stasis technology. Nakamichi wanted to make it clear enough so it dominates the front panel even more than Nakamichi logo or model name. So what is this stasis you ask? To put it simply, the stasis is basically a simple circuit that makes sure there is no negative feedback. It reduces current fluctuation, which makes the operation extremely stable and thus eliminates huge portion of distortion. I've heard people praising the amp as the best amplifier ever, etc, etc. That's why I got her in the first place. I'm gonna compare her to the Yamaha B1 and Sony TN7, which are pretty much reference amps for me, so I may be a bit harsh to the PA70. To assess the sound, I'm not using any preamplifier and I've got the amp connected to the Infinity Sigma. She didn't have any problems driving the speakers, but to make sure she can drive anything, I tried connecting her to Infinity Carpa, which are known for being amplifier killers. No problem there either. She's not restored, but she was serviced in Japanese Nakamichi Service Center a couple of years ago, so she should be in a top condition. What's brilliant about the amp is her outstanding level of detail. You can hear pretty much anything the song or drag has to offer. That is quite rare hearing that much detail coming out of an older amplifier. The bass is deep and powerful but a bit mushy or not very clear or not clear enough for what I'm used to. The mids are rather nice and detailed, however somewhat veiled again. The highs are crisp, but not harsh as some amplifiers can produce, so it doesn't hurt listening to hi-hats or something. The overall color is a bit colder than I'd fancy, I'd call it somewhat neutral. Which is a good thing for some people, but I love the warm, smooth sound VFS produce. She's got rather small sound stage, it's not very engaging. The sound comes from a center point, but it's sort of just there, it doesn't fill the room with the sound, it's quite boring that is. The overall experience is not what I'd call musical. It's playing music well, it's enjoyable, but it's nothing that will get you over the moon. No matter how much I fancy Nakamichi as a company and how much I wanted her to sound good, I must say the simplifier is not their finest product. 
I'm not saying she sounds bad, far from it. She sounds better than most of the iron temps nowadays, but I was comparing her to my reference amps, and the PA70CE simply can't stand a chance. But again, hardly anything can. The PA7A amps are quite pricey. I'd get one only in case I'd want her for a Nakamichi collection or a part of an all Nakamichi system. Right now I use it for pretty much anything, music, games, films, YouTube, whatever, and it's perfectly fine, but specifically for music, I'd go for any VFET power amp instead. Nakamichi company is still alive and sort of kicking, however their products are not exactly up to, up to what I'd consider high end, or at least mid end, or maybe it's just an end for the matter. They've got two product ranges, car and home audio. Let's have a gander at home audio, which is what Nakamichi was famous for. They've got no European website, so let's go to the US, and this is what greets you. Nakamichi Dragon. Not an amplifier, not an audio player, but a stupid soundbar. Not the blood hell Nakamichi, a soundbar, really. And the rest of the products are, you guessed it, soundbars. Nakamichi was always this benchmark of quality and innovation and this is really sad and pathetic. When a company is acquired by a shit Chinese holding, it always becomes shit like every other Chinese shit. It's just inevitable and it pisses me off every single time. And on this sad note, I'm ending this review. Don't go buying new Chinese Nakamichi rubbish and stick with the old Japanese stuff. Cheerio.